It's my wish and prayer that the Lord will communicate with us individually and will bless us as we study his word this morning. It's a great privilege for me to be here before you. And uh, the subject we have to consider this morning is in the devotional that we are reading. For August 26, the title is Love and Justice Harmonized. August 26, every language is different page, but it's the same reading. Love and Justice Harmonized. It's a question. Do you favor justice or mercy? This is a difficult question. Both responses are technically incorrect. God's ways require mercy and justice. Mercy cannot be fully known without perfect justice. And justice without mercy is harsh and graceless. This is a thought from John Barry. How can we harmonize our views of justice and mercy? How can we act more justly today? When Peter came to Jesus with a question, after the consideration of the lost sheep and the work of the shepherd to look for, find, bring back, and restore that sheep. And Jesus applied that uh, to problems in the church. Matthew 18, yes, begin with the importance of every soul for God, every one of us so precious that he was willing to give in Jesus his life to save us. Then how should we deal with each other? And he mentioned the procedure that many times is ignored in, in our relationship, you see something, as here in America, they say, if you see something, say something. But how we do that? Yes. How we relate with each other is, is very important. Many times we lose the confidence of a soul. Because instead of going straight and talking, as Jesus says, we go around. We talk with others. We call that soul to the committee without doing the personal work. And finally, we lost a precious soul that could be recovered if we follow the instructions of the Lord. But then the Lord was questioned by Peter. How many times... Shall I forgive my brother that offend me? Seven times? Peter thought that he got the maximum. Seven times forgiving my brother for his offenses should be enough. But Jesus answered, not, not seven. Multiply that by 70 and... In a day, what is the message? There is no limit for the grace, for the forgiveness. But the parable that Jesus gave just after is where we see the king called the servants, 
found one that was on 10,000 talents. He said, this man will never be able to pay his guilty. Let us bind him, take him to the jail, and he will, uh, we will sow his family, and the debt will not be paid. Seeing the situation, he asked for mercy. And uh, moved by compassion, Jesus said, the king forgave him everything and let him free. Going, he found a fellow servant that uh, owned something to him, very small amount. And the same request was presented to him. Forgive me. Give me time. Be patient with me, and I will pay you. He will not do that. He asked to take him to jail. Observing that reaction, other servants came to the king and informed him. This is what uh, the one receive all forgiveness from you. Look what he did with his fellow man. Then the king called him and brought upon him all the consequences of his decision. And Jesus said, this is the kingdom of heaven. What? This is what happened among us. Then he gave these words, Matthew 18, verse 35. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your heart forgive not everyone his brother's transgressions. How can we act more justly today? Justice and mercy stood apart in opposition to each other, separated by a wild gulf. The Lord, our Redeemer, clothed his divinity with humanity and wrought out in behalf of men a character that was without spot or blemish. He planted his cross midway between heaven and earth and made it the object of attraction, which reached both, both ways, drawing both justice and mercy across the gulf. Justice moved from his exalted throne, and with all the armies of heaven approached the cross. There it saw one, equal with God, bearing the penalty of all injustice and sin. With perfect satisfaction, justice bound in reverence at the cross, saying, it is enough. Manuscript release, page 94, oh, 94 18, 99. What we see at the cross, we see the mercy of God to save humanity, and we see his justice to punish sin in the barrier of sin. Psalms 85, verse 10, mercy and truth are met together. 
Righteousness and peace have keys. Keys to each other. The cross is the stupendous expedient by which is harmonized the love and justice of God. It is the sinner's only mean of salvation. The image of his love may be so stamped upon the mind that it cannot, can never be effaced. Then Jesus Christ will be so evident evidently set forth, crucified before you, that you will be a partaker of the dignity of his suffering. I have such an intense longing that you may look into the heart of this great mystery and find that it is that its interpretation is love. Now, this is a definition of love. Is the interpretation of the great mystery. Jesus Christ at the cross. The only mean of our salvation. Harmonizing justice and mercy of God. Love is this perfect balance between both. God alone can lead you to so recognize his mercy, love, and forbearance that you will have the faith that works by love and purifies the soul. This is the gift of God. It is the opening of the heart to receive the word which is as the leaves of the tree of life. May God fill your heart with his love so that it may be said that you have purified your soul by obeying the truth. Lift him up, page 252, is the paragraph that follows, believing in Christ and receiving his transforming grace is not a guess work, but a work which causes Christ's virtues to be reflected in mind and character. When you gain this experience, you will say, I have tested and seen that the Lord is good. The Lord Jesus shall be my portion forever. The power of the cross will move in you the mysterious springs of hope and fear, adoration and love. Angels are watching and waiting, and we witness to the fact that the world has you not. Jesus has found you sitting at his feet to learn from him the way, the truth, and the life. Henceforth, surrendering your will to the will of Christ, you are drawn into a region where the cross is the central object. The world fades from your view. The glory shining from the threshold of heaven is the all-attractive influence. The riches of the grace of Christ hold you in willing obedience. You are only too glad to impart to others the 
gift you have received. I hope the time will be enough. Reading this, my mind was taken to 1970. The month of July, we, were take, uh, we, we had the privilege to participate in the first youth convention of the Brazilian Union. that time, the efforts of my parents, especially the patience with which my father deal with us, with me, with my brothers, found the result in that camp meeting or that youth convention. Jesus was exalted in messages and songs. And for the first time in my life, I saw the great mercy of our Heavenly Father toward sinners like we, young people. Even in the youth convention, Brother Paul Baubach and other youth, we together, we left the meetings several times. Got involved and, and seen in the, very close to the theater where we were, was the bus station. And we were there to see people coming from different places and, and enjoying us young people 15, 16 years of age observing what was going on. Even eating junk food instead of going there and eat with the good food that was offered to us. But we were doing the same thing with the spiritual food that was presented. But in some way the love of God touched each one of us during that camp meeting. I would say the three years of patience and prayer of our parents found in that exaltation of Jesus, in that personal conviction was brought to us, a change in our lives. And from that time on, as we just read here, we found the greatest privilege to work for our brothers, for our cousins, in our local churches. And the Lord was preparing us for a greater activities and influence in his cause. As we just read, the glory shining from the threshold of heaven will be the all-attractive influence. The riches of the grace of Christ hold you in willing obedience. You are only too glad to impart to others the gift you have received. Coming back home, I say no word was not necessary. My father observed me for short time and says, what happened with you? I say, why, you question? Because you are not the same boy that left home. Something happened with you. And that was true. The heart was changed. The mind was renewed. It was just a decision. But once the decision was made, the Lord took control of the will and changed everything. The grace of God is, we cannot explain, but is real and works marvelously with each one that allows 
him to work. Quoting the letter that was sent to us from Brother Silva. Our Lord is a God of love, grace and mercy, full of compassion. In spite of rebellion of his people Israel, he bore with them for a long time. He was more than willing to guide, save, and protect them as long as they were willing to accept his instructions. The prophet revealed the great interest of God in their prosperity with these words. He who touched you touches the apple of his eye. Zechariah 2 and verse 8. Zechariah had a very comforting vision in which he saw the high priest Joshua making intercession for his people before Jesus. The angel of the everlasting covenant. In this vision, Satan was accusing God's people and Joshua of sin and was asking the Lord permission to destroy his disobedient children. But what was the end of this experience? Not only Joshua was forgiven. He was cleansed. And God's people would continue the work of reformation until completion. Lesson for us. In Zechariah chapter 7, verse 9 and 10. With the mercy that was shown by the Lord to them, what was expected? Zechariah chapter 7. Verses 9 and 10. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment, and show mercy and compassion every man to his brother, and oppress not the widow, not the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor, and let the known of you image evil against his brother in your heart. In chapter 8, verse 16 and 17. These are the things that he shall do. He speaketh every man the truth to his neighbor, execute the judgment of truth and peace in your gates, and let none of you image evil in your hearts against his neighbor, and love no fowls of, for all these are things that I hate, says the Lord. The great question was made by the Apostle Paul. As is through the law of faith that we are justified. It's through the law of faith that we are reconciled. Then his question in Romans 3 verse 31 was. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. The willing obedience is result of the work of grace and mercy in our hearts. And we will be able to obey as we trust in God's mercy and we follow him as in Micah chapter 
6 and verse 8. What the Lord is expecting from us. To do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with the Lord. Close with, with these words of inspiration. As you make a full surrender of your will to God's will, your way to God's way, you will learn of him who is meek and lowly in heart and will find rest unto your soul. A calm confidence will preside over you. You will experience more and more clear clearly the sense of an ever-present, all-pervading Savior. This will give the soul power, which the changing circumstances of earth cannot undermine. It plants the feet upon a solid rock. May this be our experience not only today, but every day. During this assembly and during all the time we are called to serve the Lord, that we continue with this surrender moment by moment that the will of God be fulfilled in us and through us is my desire and prayer.